Alex Rodriguez became the 29th player in Major League history to record his 3,000th hit here at Yankee Stadium last Friday. Following in the footsteps of former Yankees Wade Boggs and teammate Derek Jeter, he became just the third player to do it on a home run. The Mets took on the Braves in hopes of winning their 11th straight. Bottom first, Daniel Murphy shoots it to right field for a bases loaded double. Everyone would score and the Mets would take an early 3-0 lead. Later in the second, Bartolo Colon pitching to Andrelton Simmons and Simmons hits a gapper to deep right center. Lagares is not going to get that one. A.J. Pruszynski tries to score and while he's initially called out, he's eventually ruled safe under further review because Wrecker blocked the plate. Can't do that anymore. 3-1 Mets. Then in the fourth, Braves trailing by one. Jace Peterson hits a sack fly to left. That'll get the run in and the game would be tied. Fifth inning now and Eric Campbell is able to draw the walk with the bases loaded and the Mets go up 4-3. Now check this out. Top of the sixth, Bartolo Colon at 41 years old and 285 pounds is able to run down A.J. Pruszynski leading off first base. He would go six innings giving up three earned runs and would improve to 4-0 this year. The Mets win their 11th straight, tying a franchise record, and at 13-3 are officially the best team in baseball. Flyers taking on the Devils at Prudential Center last night. First period. Devils get the puck down into the flyer zone. Goalie Ray Emery thinks he has all the time in the world to clear the puck, but Adam Henrik is able to scoot his way behind the net, grab the puck, finds the open Yager, and, well, not many players can score from that angle, folks. Final seconds of the first, Devils win the faceoff and look to score before the period ends. They lose the puck, but Yager quickly gets it back. It's a two-on-one, but that's no match for the ages. Yager, he's able to score his second goal of the night before time runs out. Second period now, Yager in front of the net, passes to veteran Scott Gomez. He's got the puck behind the Flyers' net and cradles it there for a bit. Yager dancing around in front of the net, gets the puck back, and before you can say Yarmir Yager, he's got his third goal of the night. So barely halfway through the game, Yager, 42 years old, gets his 15th career hat trick and career goal number 714, sixth on the all-time list. Devils would go on to win 5-2. to two. On to the hardwood we go. Game six of the NBA Finals. Cavs taking on the Warriors. Third quarter now. Warriors leading by one. Iguodala gets the ball, finds the opening slam dunk. Warriors now up by eight. Steph Curry making a drive up the court. Iguodala, it's deja vu all over again. The uncontested slam dunk gives the Warriors a 10-point lead. Later, Curry tries his own luck with a three-pointer, misses, but not to worry, it's Festus Azili to the rescue with a dunk. What a heads-up play that was. With less than two minutes to play in the third now, LeBron from the outside, no dice. LeBron again from the inside, no dice. The future Hall of Famer would only be two for seven in field goals for the entire quarter. Heading into the fourth now, Cavs hoping for a miracle. Down by 12, James takes the ball down court, and the Cavs have some hope as the lead is closed to seven. Later, Curry tries his luck with a three-point again, and this time, count it. Then Curry says to Thompson, why don't you try? And bang. He is pumped up. Six minutes left in the start of the game. Iguodala hits a three. He would have 25 points this game. Only two minutes left now. J.R. Smith tries his luck. Misses. LeBron. Misses. The Currys are loving it. Under a minute now. J.R. Smith gives it another shot and makes the three. Cavs now within two scores of tying this thing up. Less than 20 seconds now. LeBron praying for a miracle, and he won't get it. That's going to do it for the Cavs, and the Golden State Warriors would be your 2015 NBA champions. The Rutgers women's basketball team made some changes to its coaching staff this offseason. Hall of Famer and head coach C. Vivian Stringer hired two new assistant coaches earlier this week. Kelly Gibson joins the Scarlet Knights after spending five seasons as an assistant coach at Syracuse, along with Irvin Monier, who joins the team after a five-year stint as the associate head coach at LaSalle. The Seton Hall University Athletics Program inducted four new members into its Hall of Fame this past Monday. Three of the four members were athletes, wrestler Lou Sergio, baseball speedster Greg Jameson, and Samuel D'Alembert, who helped lead the Pirates to the Sweet 16 in 2000. Also inducted was Dr. John Patillo, who served as Seton Hall's chancellor from 1984 to 1989. Sources say that LaMarcus Aldridge, now a free agent, will likely not re-sign with the Portland Trailblazers for the 2015-16 season. The four-time All-Star feels as though the team isn't making the moves it needs to make in order to improve for next year. Aldridge has been with the Blazers since 2006, his first year in the NBA. 
Mets third baseman David Wright has been out since mid-April with spinal stenosis. However, general manager Sandy Alderson says he may be ready to return right around the All-Star break. The team captain is batting 333, but has only played in eight games this season. With your sports from Midtown, I'm Mike Black.